is it am i audible yes sir. yes we can hear you and also see the screen thank you thank you thank you so much yeah so uh, as you all know the today's webinar is on effective project management for the ngo projects uh, using the project db principles and let's get into this and uh, already uh, ratna has uh, shared about uh, proventures and i don't want to uh, spend some time on this but rather i'll move to the webinar about the webinar so ngos they play a vital role in developing the life changing projects so they play a very 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 important role in the society so they change the lives of the people so and for such kind of organizations so definitely there should be some effective mechanism for developing their projects and through this webinar we would like to share the knowledge about the effective project management uh, projects you know uh, the ways how the ngos can develop the projects using the ngo project I mean uh, project depot principles All right Here are the key takeaways of the webinar. So we'll have the introduction to the Project Depro, and then followed by the structure of the Project Depro, and then managing the projects uh, in the development and humanitarian sectors. And we'll discuss about the triple constraint, and then principles of the project management, and then the project management manager competences. So we'll move to the next slide. Yeah. So I thought let this session be a little interactive and I wanted to ask a few questions. So if you could look at this particular picture, so what comes to your mind? Any, I, I want uh, you people to describe this particular picture in one word and what would be the suitable word that you can apply to this particular picture? Trust. Pardon? Trust. Trust, yes, very good, very good, very good. Uh, who is that? Sharmila. Sharmila, madam. Very nice. That's the right thing. So what made you think that that would be the right word here for this particular picture? Uh, uh, if someone is jumping mm -hmm. uh, without a net. Yeah. Uh, and if there is a, a person to, uh, on the other side, Coming to hold your hand. Correct. The, uh, the kind of trust that I place on the other person before I jump. Yes. Uh, yes. Matters. Correct. Exactly correct. Whatever you said is absolutely right. The trust, you know. So uh, trust is very important in everyone's life. You know, we need to trust uh, the people. So without trust, we can't believe anybody, right? So if somebody has to trust us so when do they do so when would you think that somebody would trust us anybody can answer well it could be when we do things in others best intention so it's it boils down to character yes. or it can also be uh, our ability to do certain things, which, which is actually competency. So mm -hmm. uh, at, at an individual level, it can be both of these. Yeah. So you mean to say it's competency and the good intentions uh, that we uh, have. Competency and character. character. Correct. Very nice. Anybody else? I think when the other person is... Uh, yeah, uh, Joyce, you are talking something. Yeah, please. Yeah, so uh, after we get to know each other, mm -hmm. after get to know each other, mm -hmm. and then we start trusting people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So after get okay. to know each other, like what what makes you uh, have trust in the other person? Yeah, probably their good intentions and good intentions. Uh, the character that motivates us. Motivate us, right? They should motivate you. And then, yes. Uh huh. Yes. Very nice. 
very nice choice and, and somebody uh, else was also trying to speak i couldn't see their name yeah please somebody yeah this is james i said uh, if the other person is reliable that also may be the reason reliable. very nice very nice yes the reliability matters a lot isn't it very nice we need to build credibility credibility very nice very good very good sharmila ji credibility should be there the credibility has to be built yeah any other responses and james you said it's reliability right uh, yes i do yes yeah great 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 any other responses all right let us see what are those things you know what are the characteristic features that one should have so that the other person can trust us and let us also see if your options are here so transparent so transparency is very very important if somebody has to trust us isn't it yes or no so we need to be so transparent enough and then we need to be honest and then we need to have good intentions i think joys has mentioned it right and also sharmila ji also mentioned very good so we need to be disciplined and then reliable and then we need to have some good will and then the skill set is very much required isn't it so if you can look at this picture you know the person should have that skill set of you know uh holding her when she is in the air isn't it if that skill set is missing definitely the trust is violated right we can't have that yeah so all these things should be there so why why all these things should be there like you know ngos especially right they they go to the sponsors they meet the many people you know the big people in the market you know they want to go and tell them that yes we want to do this this is what the need that we have identified in a particular society you know they are deprived of something else which needs to be fixed and when we approach as an ngo when we approach the people the sponsors so they need to trust us so that can happen only when we have all these things so when we are transparent when we are honest when we have good intentions when we are disciplined reliable and when we have a proper goodwill in the society and then having the right skill set very nice so do you all accept this yes of course i think so yeah and also very importantly and last but not the least the delivery capability isn't it so once we go and when we talk to somebody and when we try to convince them that you know we are going to do something for the society and when we are going to achieve something for the society so then the delivery capability should be there isn't it we need to be capable of delivering the right outputs okay through the projects how could this be possible is through the projects when we develop some projects so this is possible all right right we'll move to the next slide so here we can see the ngos are the most trusted organizations in the society so they give uh society the smiles you know they bring smiles on the faces so they change their present to the change the future and they are empowering the people to change their lives so it is very very important role that the ngos play in changing the lives of the people through the life changing projects that they take up and here if you can see whenever we say the word project so the project managers come into the picture and as we said in the previous slide we have seen the right skill set is very 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 important you know uh, for a project manager and that right skill set and with good amount of knowledge of the project management tools and definitely the project management play a very instrumental role and they can be used as a very good instrument in developing the projects and in also managing the projects managing the people so this is all is required for the project managers and here if you can see we have two important tools that uh, pm for ngos has initiated so one is the project depro and the other one is a program depro these are the two uh, initiatives of uh, pm for ngo and if you can see the project depro 
So here we have the certifications available for this uh, Project DPRO program and also as well for the pro program DPRO. So here we have two levels of uh, Project DPRO certification. Let me talk about the certifications now. So here you can get the foundation level certification and also the practitioner level certification. And here, if you can see the Project DPRO Foundation certification is intended for the new project managers or the experienced ones. So for anybody who is really aspiring to get uh, certified in the project management and really, if you can see PM4 and Jeevas have really come out with a very beautiful program. It's a very light uh, weight program wherein it's uh, very uh, useful for the project managers, especially working in a NGO sector to get the certification. Okay, right, we'll move to the next slide. So here you can see the goal of uh, the Project DPRO Foundation certification is to confer a professional certification status for project managers in the sector and provide the certification and learning resources that are comprehensive, accessible, and appropriate to the professionals working in the sector and integrate content that is contextualized to the international development sector with other internationally recognized certifications. So here in this particular certification uh, program, uh, you can, if you can see the exam, it has 75 questions out of which you need to secure 65 percentage. So that means you need to have 49 correct answers answered. Okay, and there will be no negative marking and uh, from this October, I mean, uh, last October 2022, so this DPRO exams are open book and the duration of the exam is uh, 120 minutes, that is two hours. Okay, so this is about the Project DPRO certification. And coming to the structure of the Project DPRO guide. So here we have a total of five sections. It is divided into five sections, which includes the introduction to the project uh, DPRO guide and the project DPRO phases and project DPRO principles and adapting to the project DPRO and changes in the project DPRO guide. So these are all the things that what uh, project DPRO guide provides you. So this is the structure of uh, project DPRO guide. Uh, this we wanted to share with you. And coming to this uh, project DPRO phase model. So here we can see five different types of phases here. So the first one is a project identification and definition. So where we identify the needs, okay, and we identify the right set of stakeholders, you know, because whenever we say the project, we have so many people involved in the project. So there are so many people like, you know, we have the donors, we have the beneficiaries, we have the project sponsors, we have the project team who are working, we have the project manager, so, so many people are involved. We need to identify the right set of stakeholders and we need to define their roles, what role they play in the project. So that is what is going to happen in the project identification and definition. And next, moving to the project setup phase. If you see, look at the project setup phase. So we need to know what is that we are going to achieve from this particular project. So who are all are involved? So we need to come out, you know, what is the cause that we're going to incur on this particular project? So all these things have to be defined in the project charter. So with this project charter, you know, it authorizes us to officially start the project. And that project charter is being prepared in the project setup phase. And next coming to the planning. So as you all know, right, so planning is very, very, very important in the project. And though we plan, so the plan is always dynamic in nature. So the plan keeps on changing. So we need to have a right plan. So we need to plan so many things. We need to plan the resources. We need to plan the cost. And we need to plan the schedule. And then we need to go ahead with that particular plan. And, and even after having so much of efforts invested on planning. And can we say that, yes, the plan goes accordingly? No. So definitely there will be a change in the plan as the plan is dynamic in nature. And accordingly, we need to change the plan and we need to not only uh, change the plan and we need to move accordingly. 
so the planning is very very important phase in the project depro phase model and next coming to the project implementation and when you say the implementation so it's the execution you know you're putting all the things that you have planned in the project planning phase into implementation you are executing the things so whenever we say executing the things there comes the real challenges there comes the real challenges so you wanted to implement all the things that you have planned and the things keep on changing so you need to monitor a lot of things here you need to manage so many things you need to manage the people you need to manage the cost you need to schedule the you need to manage the schedules everything you know all this entire managing part happens once you start implementing the project and coming to the project closure so here in this phase so the project is realized and now the project is going to take the next phase you know it is is going to get oper operatable right and you're going to transit the project gets trans transitioned here so you're going to hand over the project to the client so that it gets operable so how how do you hand over the project so and then comes the sustainability of the project right so this is all the important phases in the project depro phase model these are all the important phases that we need to know and next let us move on to the next slide so here if you can see the project depro life cycle model what are all the things that we have discussed in the previous slide like identification and definition the setup and planning implementation and closure along with these phases we have something else in addition to this so we can have this meal which meal stands for monitoring evaluation accountability and learning so as we discussed you know whenever we start implementing the project so we need to monitor the project so this this things you know monitoring evaluation every phase of the project so we're going to have this monitoring and every phase of the project we're going to have this evaluation because without evaluation we, we do not know whether the project is going in the right way or not you need to evaluate the things are we getting the right outputs so are the outcomes achieved are the goals are achieving are we achieving the goals and every project you know through every phase of the project we definitely have the learnings so what went well why did it not go wrong you know why did it go wrong so what is the reason so we need to have so many learnings out of the project and we have to record all this learning so that it will be helpful for the people you know who are taking similar kind of projects the next time and accountability definitely yes for the things that happen you know we have so many risks and issues involved in a project so what if if a risk is occurred what if this risk was not handled and it has become an issue and these issues have to be handled who is accountable for this so all these kind of things have to be defined and also if you can see the five principles here well governed participatory comprehensive integrated and adaptive so these five principles they occur in each phase of this particular life cycle each phase of this particular project so it should be well governed it should be participatory it should be comprehensive it should be integrated it should be adaptive so why do we say well governed so all these things we look little further okay so this is about the project depro life cycle model right and we'll move to the next uh, and if you can see here the planning and implementation they are iterative in nature so nowadays you know we can see in the corporates we have this agile uh, method of working you know so wherein in iterations we have the things you know we have the outcomes uh figured out and you know we work in a uh iterative model so we also call it as agile way of getting the things done right and we'll move to the next slide so where we are going to see about managing the projects in the development and humanitarian sectors so here if you can see we can see it's it sounds very very simple you know uh, the projects here you know it's uh, managing the projects in the development and uh, humanitarian sectors is very simple 
but the environment when you see the operating environments here they are very complex and there are numerous challenges there are many number of challenges so very good project relationships have to be maintained you know they are very complicated you know managing the people the people have to be managed the cost is very uncertain you know today it might be very less and maybe who knows it can hike up so all these things are very very complicated and all these things have to be managed properly okay so if you can see in short there is lot that could go wrong once you start implementing so the operating environments are so complex in nature right so we'll see here a uh, different challenges here so here if you can see look at this particular uh, image so what is striking to your mind so what what is the challenge here can anybody say what is the challenge here you can make a guess by looking at the picture well, how how the swing move yeah the swing will not move right isn't it yes or no so what did go wrong here very very good identification yeah i think it's actually with the design design or uh -huh. or, or, or think keeping in mind the utility actually which yes, is actually yes. design okay design design okay so there is something you know wrong with the design maybe uh, the person who is sharing the requirements has not understood the requirements properly there might be a chance right let us see what what the reason would be yeah so here if you can see this is incorrect or whenever you look at the picture you know it says you know it's incorrect completely incorrect so the swing cannot be moved if it is uh, developed in this manner so it's incorrect and inadequate understanding of the needs so this is a very 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 big challenge so when whenever we are trying to understand the needs of the people of the society the ngos so there are different types of needs you know there are felt needs there are expressed needs right so when there are different types of needs you know uh, there are normative needs right so whenever you have the need in the society that particular needs have to be understood properly so you need to have some adequate knowledge about that needs what is needed in the society so that you can provide them a good solution the better solution the best solution can be provided to them in the society right so this is this is one big challenge incorrect or inadequate understanding of the needs the people have to understand the needs in a very better manner right all right very good very good karl thank you so much yeah and now we have another picture here anybody can make a guess what would be the challenge here it's not viable it's not viable okay mm -hmm. why why do you say that it's not viable we have a rope we have a, no you said like in the previous thing you know the stick cannot be moved now it can move right see what what happens is sometimes we we go ahead based on what the customer says assuming that's that's the holy grail or the gospel truth mm -hmm. but the customer themselves won't really know what is the problem Yes. You know, so the customer says that okay, well, this is the problem, and and then we try and design a solution around it. We end up with something like this actually, <laughs> exactly. which is not be viable in the longer run. Correct, correct. It is not really viable, right? Isn't it? So whatever the effort you invest on this kind of project, okay. right? You yes. asked us in uh, chat. Oh, oh, see, it's okay, uh, Ratna. I'm not. I haven't opened the chat. Right. Impo. Ah, uh, yeah. Shanti wrote improper support, weak support. Very good, Lakshmana. and yes lack of yes yes i'm sorry guys i i did not uh, see this chat i'm sorry yeah let me put it here now yeah right all right great so now let us see what this challenge is actually so poor project design isn't it this is not viable at all this design will not work out actually so this is a very big challenge again so coming out with a poor project design right very good very good call and uh, good responses so let us check with what the other challenge is yeah now you can see let me see the chat somebody is writing
so here i gave i come with the answer it is unrealistic expectations right so here if you can see who who would dream you know a swing to be like this you know it's overloaded lakshmana yes correct so here if you can see who would expect you know a sofa to be there isn't it tell you want to talk something you want to say something <laughs> no this typically happens with it clients they pay for the cost of an ant they expect oh. an elephant in return <laughs> exactly exactly true <laughs> exactly exactly so they what whatever the expectation see it's it's so unrealistic right we never even dreamt like you know there would be a sofa placed in a you know or a recliner placed in a swing right so this is beyond expectations correct shanti this is beyond expectation right this is also one big challenge right very nice so we'll move to the next uh, picture yeah So what is the challenge here? There is no solution there. Tal. There is no solution there. There is no solution. Okay, solution is not there. Not complete solution, right? It's only just a partly thing. You know, we can see hardly, barely we can see the solution is being uh, done. Okay. So what could it be then? uh only hope but no solution shanti okay incomplete pradeep said it's in incomplete yeah yes obviously the c if you can see if the sponsor or somebody is not providing us the ad adequate resources what will happen if you don't have the resources uh full obvious right we can't we can't complete the project we need to have the adequate number of resources to complete a project if you don't have proper good number of resources obviously it can't be, the solution can't come out right and it goes incomplete yeah lakshmana said it's pol political presentation lakshmana ji yeah so i also would would like to look at in inadequate resources as probably cash flow challenges if if you are a startup for example exactly you know, cash flow you need money not just in paper mm -hmm. or not just by the time that it comes in different phases but right. you need money in the bank which you can use today Exactly, so, the liquid cash yes. should be there. The cash exactly, there. exactly, yeah. which which NGOs may not have a lot of liquidity. Exactly, that so, would be a so problem, that, right? So a, that would yeah. be a major challenge for the NGOs. So you know they'll have to find the good sponsor, the liquidity, and they'll have to convince and they'll have to provide the uh, resources in time. So they need to without without those resources, maybe they can't achieve the success in completing the project. Very good, very good, good response. and we'll move to the next slide and see what is this what could be the challenge so we can see uh beautiful right now the picture looks so beautiful we have some snowman behind you now we have uh, uh the beautiful swing there so did we really achieve the project carl what do you say yeah. well see i'm just thinking about it uh, if in in a in, in a snowy area when uh -huh. i mean looks like the branch is cut off uh -huh. so it, it's it's not relevant i would actually say that it's not relevant and the branch can also let's uh -huh. say die after some point of time so it pro so either it's not relevant or it can be like a short term solution okay you, know, you can probably use it some point of time but the branch will cut off after some time maybe uh, maybe yeah yeah so uh, so th so that's what i would say not relevant or not serving the purpose as somebody just said that or it's a short term solution that's what i can yes, think yes. of so pradeep also gave his response like you know not required as a landscape but you know uh, so here if you could observe something here in the in the uh, you know uh, the landscape in the previous picture how was the landscape so it was so greenery right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. greenery so this is this is a point where we take up the project right we took the project here in this season and we were supposed to deliver the project in this season but what happened i did not do this in this suppose say for example you know i did not complete i was not able to complete this particular project in this season change in the external landscape yeah and when did i do that you know the completed the season has changed so that means what does it mean there is some delay in the project 
suppose say for example like most of the ngos they do right this uh, winterization you know uh, projects you know where they go uh, give the blankets to the people you know who are on the pavements they you know because of severe cold you know they go and serve these blankets so and and you started this project and when are you supposed to complete this pro particular project suppose let us think one ngo they started this project to distribute all the blankets uh, in that particular you know suppose if let us take the state of andhra pradesh or telangana or maharashtra whatever be the state you know so all the districts they wanted to distribute that particular blankets to the needy people that was a project let us assume and what if they don't have a proper plan and like you know if, if they do not know you know uh, to how many people they would like to go and serve and with i mean inadequate resources inadequate plan and all these things what will happen so by the time you go and approach the people if it is changing to summer summer season will there be a success in the project and you have distributed the blankets to everybody but can you say that the project was success Okay. Okay. No See, worries. generally, I think with, with needy people, it is a different example because even if you give blankets in summer season, they may use it for something else than what what then what what then then what we had intended. Definitely, so, but 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 yeah. you know, the NGO wanted to uh, give the woolen bed sheets, thick bed sheets, to the people, so that you know they could protect them from the cold, severe cold. Probably an example of uh, another example which you could think of is in terms of food. Suppose uh -huh. you have to deliver, let's say, food tonight exactly. for let's say hundred people, mm -hmm. and uh, we have we want to kind of uh, you know this little bit of delay. Mm -hmm. We can't give today's food tomorrow. You yeah. Know? So there is an expiry right. thing which which may not really be relevant. Exactly. Exactly, Carl. That's that's a very absolute answer from your end. Very nice. So obvious, right? You know, when you go and distribute the food tomorrow, it, it doesn't serve the purpose, right? It, it's already spoiled. Distribute today's food tomorrow. It's okay yeah. if you distribute tomorrow's food tomorrow. That... All right. So there should not be delay. You know, delay in the projects is very, very important thing that we need to capture. So the delays have to be handled in a very appropriate manner. Isn't it? So the project delays is another challenge, uh, especially in, in the developmental uh, sectors. Right. So we can see here. What's the next one? What do you think this challenge is? So we have to think of the risks involved in the project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We will have to think about Joyce. Can you please repeat it again? Have you involved in the project before and starting the project? uh i'm sorry your voice you know starting and ending the project uh yeah what what is that you need to check with that so carl said it's risk no, we have to the risk in all right you, you can type you can, you can type yeah so we also have a response from edson okay it's natural disasters isn't it very nice it's natural disasters you know we we cannot expect that to happen right it's 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 a uh, yeah hand of god which is not in our hands totally you know natural disasters we do not know when it comes so the best example before us was the covid isn't it so entire thing you know we have a response from priyadarshini it says complete collapse of the ecosystem which supported the project so whenever the natural disasters happen so you have prepared everything for the project you know you wanted to just implement go into the market and do something for the needy and what happened all of a sudden there was a natural calamity natural disaster so then that definitely would affect the success of yes exactly correct it's a, it's a good good answer collapse of the support system so the support system is collapsed and the entire success of the project is really it's it's a, very, a big question no we can't go further we can't make the project success right very nice very nice so this is the natural disaster so these are a few challenges that we can see in the development sectors and how do we handle these challenges how do you face these challenges so what is there any solution for handling these challenges is what we need to look about okay right and here we can see one more challenge what could they be this challenge be yeah i think it's total cost overrun 
which kind of brings down everything i, I don't know mm-hmm. that's what i'm yeah. actually thinking yeah okay we'll see we'll see yeah it's inadequate capacity the sponsor he doesn't have this uh, right thing you know uh, with him to sponsor inadequate capacity maybe it can be a resource or it can be the cash flow as you said earlier it can be anything you know if we have inadequate capacity then we can't look for a success of the project so these are all the various you know challenges and see let us look at this change challenge see how beautiful it's looking right so what would be the challenge here so we have a beautiful uh, tree within the season there is no delay we have the fruits we have you know a good price tag also there and we also have the swing also ready a beautiful question there i think this this seems to be like perfect as long as it's within budget the uh, other things are costly then it's a problem actually <laughs> overpriced yeah. isn't it exactly prashant prashant right maji okay so unrealistic budgets right so it's totally unrealistic you know it, it when when you look at it you have, you have come to the point it's unrealistic budgets so even when we have the unrealistic budgets we can't see that you know the project would be a success very good nice so here if you can see what would be this challenge well two different faces are not uh, talking to each other <laughs> they are working on their own i guess <laughs> okay so we can see that poor quality right isn't it so it's broken it's broken maybe i don't know if the butterfly has uh, enjoyed the swing or not but we can see that the low quality materials were used so when when we compromise on the quality of the product when we compromise on the quality of resources so obviously you know it, it wouldn't be a success isn't it so these are all the various challenges that we have right and and these challenges definitely they could threaten the success of the project because you can see the designing the delivery of the project all these things you know they they depend upon uh, you know the context of time the budget the quality the scope the risks what are the risks that are involved and what are all the constraints that are involved all these things they play a vital role right and if you can also see managing the projects you know that are often implemented by our partners the consortia the contractors of con- subcontractors so what happens if you give a project to a subcontractor so he might use the quality things or not we do not know right there is a recent potential risk and these potential risks have to be identified and these risks have to be addressed so that the intended project benefits can be delivered so these are all the challenges in the development and humanitarian sectors right and if you can see the project here we have come to the triple constraint here so the project whenever we see the project a project is a temporary endeavor which is undertaken to create some unique product or service or result okay and if you can see the scope quality cost resource and time and schedule so here we feel, these are the three important constraints which are you know uh, uh, integrated i can say we can say that it's integrated all these three things are integrated with each other so how do we say that they are integrated so we have the cost and resources at one particular you know uh, phase in another phase we have the scope and quality and the other phase we have the time and the schedule so how do we say that these three things are interrelated okay definitely we need to know what are the products what are the services that we are, the project will produce right so what is the scope of the project and what kind of quality output that we are going to get out of this particular project is very important so so the work is required to produce this deliverables and if you can see the cost and resources what money what material what personnel the human resources we need so all these things what are required is one thing that we speak about when it comes to the part of cost and resources and if you take this time and schedule yes the time is very very important as we have seen in the previous slides it has to be delivered within that particular time if you are exceeding the time so it is it's not a success right right so and how are they integrated with each other can anybody uh, uh, speak on this point tal maybe okay well uh, so this, this is a common problem uh, like for example assuming let's say we have one month to do something and then mm-hmm. uh, the fixed budget and then a scope we, we can actually do that but let's yeah. say some of it is actually changing mm-hmm. let's say we need to do it in 15 days Uh-huh. then we probably need to put instead of five people we probably need to put six or seven people which increases the cost uh-huh. 
Very good. Or, uh, uh, yeah, so, so suppose we have to say A, B, C, D, and then we need to C and D. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, E and F actually. Mm -hmm. Then that once again increases the timeline and then it can also move the cost forward. Definitely. So uh, it can also be vice versa with the cost as well. Yes. If you reduce the cost, mm -hmm. then uh, then we probably may have to figure out how can we do alternatively in the sense mm -hmm. like do we do subcontracting or less mm -hmm. uh, labor cost or so, suppose we have more cost exactly. then can we put extra resources or more people to do the same so it's kind of interrelated actually yes and when it comes to this question like you know you asked when we be when we began this session in what way it is different from the uh, ngo sector and corporates is it really differing well, I think it is actually similar, actually. Yes, exactly. So anywhere, you know, we see, even if you run it in a uh, NGO sector or in a corporate sector, it's all about the project that we are talking about, right? Any project you take, so this triple constraints play the same role, isn't it? So when you have the cost, you know, when the when the time schedule is increased, obviously the time, the resources are increased, you know, the cost of the resource is going up and the scope is also changing, right? All these things are integrated and they change and they depend on each other and they change accordingly. So I hope this triple constraint is uh, understood, right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, right, we'll move to the next slide. Okay, so we can see here, uh, when considering the constraints, it may uh, help, helpful to think about them within the context of inflexible and adequate, maybe. So we have two types of constraints, inflexible constraints and adaptable constraints. So here, if you can see that classification of constraints, we have two things. One is inflexible and the adaptable. So here, if you can take an example of inflexible, it's a time. So there is no flexibility in the project timeline so that it must it must be constrained and finished the, by the expected completion date. Right, isn't it? So uh, we, we have seen an example here. We have another example, which PM4 NGOs uh, usually takes that example to explain all the concepts here. We have the Delta River project wherein, uh, this particular uh, river water, you know, people living in this area, they are getting the polluted water, you know, because of the human fecal waste which is being deposited in the river and all. So they, the uh, NGO, they wanted to build up, you know, the latrines there in that particular area. So here, if you can see the example, the Delta River latrine construction needs to be completed before the rainy season. Therefore, the constraint is inflexible. So here we can see that it's not flexible; it's inflexible. Why? Because if it is a rainy season, so they'll have to dig the pits. What if if you are digging the pits and you are keeping the pits open, when it rains, the uh, the pits will get filled with the water, with the rainwater, and it's not the right thing. You know, there there we can't go. We can't make this constraint as a flexible constraint. Definitely, it has to be inflexible constraint. The time is very much inflexible here in this case, right? I hope you are understanding, right? And adaptable budget. Okay, so here if you can see the donor has requested additional scope for the project, therefore the budget will need to be revised and adapted to reflect the changes. Obviously, when we are changing the scope, additional scope is being bought into this particular project, you know, then obviously it has to be changed, it has to be adapted. And this kind of constraint, you know, we say that, you know, adaptable constraint. So example, we can see the donor has requested to double the number of latrines to be constructed within the same time frame. Therefore, additional resources are required and additional budget is required. So then only we can complete those activities within the time frame. So this is a classification of the constraints. One is the inflexible constraints we are looking at, and the other one is the adaptable constraints. Okay. So that was all about the triple constraint and classification of the constraints. And if you can see here, so these are the very important you know, principles of the project management: well governed, participatory, comprehensive integrated, adaptive. So these are all the various you know, five important principles which we need to look at and understand. So what do you mean by well-governed? So what do you think is well-governed? What do you think is well-governed? In the NGO, con in the NGO context, I can probably give a slightly different answer. Mm -hmm. It can actually be alignment to the mission. Because like what happens it. is the donor gives uh, man, uh, gives the funds with a certain agenda in mind, mm -hmm. with a certain mission in mind. Mm -hmm. NGOs can end up using the same thing for a different purpose because they actually need the money there. Mm -hmm. Though there are other examples, but I think this is a common problem here in India, and that's why I'm trying to bring this up within that mission drift. 
Right. So you're talking about the machine drift. Okay. Maybe if we talk about the uh, same, you know, different challenges that we have seen in the same kind of project. Suppose, say, for example, we have the project manager and there was a situation wherein uh, he has to take some decision. Okay. And that decision will definitely bring a very big change in the project. And can the project manager alone can take the decision and go forward? Will that be possible? Can we say yes for that? So generally, it's no. Yeah. Or, or it depends. What, what should we do because then? There are other stakeholders do? there. Yeah, other there are other stakeholders there. also. Right. Yeah, and right. when we have the other stakeholders, and where should the project manager go? There should be some process of escalation, isn't it? There should be some process of escalation. So when the, whenever we are saying well governed, we have a well, you know, set of stakeholders who are assigned the responsibilities and levels of uh, authorization so that the project can move very smoothly. Right. So there are certain situations wherein uh, the activities or like some decisions will fall outside the threshold level of the project manager. So definitely at that time, they need to be a well-governed, you know, uh, structure, be it, be it in the organization or be it at the project level. So there should be some hierarchy which has to be maintained with right set of responsibilities, isn't it? So that is what we say that it's well-governed because we have so many stakeholders. We have the project sponsors, we have the beneficiaries, we have so many people. So we need to have a well-governed, you know, we can you know, have a governance structure uh, designed and it can be as simple, you know, it can be uh, the project sponsor and it can be the uh, what uh, the uh, project manager. And we can also have some other important stakeholder into that particular governance structure. And we can say that, yes, this is a governance structure for this particular project. And anything, you know, uh, comes up, you know, beyond your threshold level, you know, you can just uh, have follow this hierarchy and get the decisions, you know, because taking the decisions or making the decisions in the right time will help us in succeeding the project. If you're not able to take the decision in the right time, right? If you don't have that kind of support in your project or in your organization, definitely the things will get delayed and thereby we can't achieve the success. So it should be well governed. I hope uh, you this particular well governed is understood, right? And when you look at this participatory, so what does this participatory mean? By, by, by name itself, it can say that somebody has to participate in, right? So as you can see in, in this seminar, you know, in this webinar, we can see, so audience are also participating, they're giving the responses, right? So the participation of the stakeholders in the project is very, very important. The project, the, all the stakeholders have to be communicated properly so that, no, they can participate whenever their need arises. So the stakeholders, you know, the, 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 one of the main important principle in the project management is the stakeholders should be participative. Okay, and comprehensive. What do you mean by comprehensiveness? So we have so many, so many, uh, you know, uh, areas that we need to focus upon, especially the project manager. Of course, everything is distributed, everything is disseminated, you know, everything is assigned to the people, the team. And definitely the project manager, the sponsor, they need to have a comprehensive observation. They, ha they have to have a proper monitoring of this particular activities, what are happening in the project. So without that comprehensiveness, maybe we can't see the success of the project. And next is integrated. It is a very another important principle, integrated. So why, why do we need this integration? As we already have seen in the triple constraint, so we have the cost, we have the schedule, we have the scope. So all these three things are definitely involved in the project. They contribute to the success of the project, wherein they are not in silos. So everything is integrated. Everything is integrated. And that principle contributes to the success of the project. And adaptive is a very important principle, adaptive. So what does this adaption means? As we have seen in the previous example, so there was a price hike and you wanted to go and approach the sponsor and you're asking for more budget. 
and definitely do we have to adopt it or not you know because the, the, the prices are high in the market and if you are not going according to the market things and we cannot properly planning about the things and if you are not able to change ourselves to the changing trends of the market definitely we can't achieve the success so we need to be adaptive so this is a very important principle adaptive being adaptive is another important principle of the project management so these are the principles and if you can see we have uh, all these things kept here in detail whatever the things that we have discussed now so the garnet structure of the project provides a framework for the management and decision making clearly articulating the roles responsibilities and tolerances the authority levels that we spoke about at each level of the management and if you can see the garnet is introduced in the identification definition phase and also further detailed in the project setup phase so in the project setup phase we have the project charter prepared in the project charter we specify the roles you know who has to do what everything is framed right and if you can see this uh, during the planning and implementation and also the closure also we need the garnet structure to be playing a uh, active role or a crucial role so all these things is why is the decisions the decisions have to be taken within the time okay so if you can see here the speed of decision making is the essence of the good project governance if you can see in all the phases we have this uh, well governed principle working you know we have this uh, stakeholders you know like sponsor board steering committee wherein they have to be identified and they have to be uh, participating in the decision making and we can also see this governance structure which is set up in the well governed setup phase during the setup phase and if you can see in the planning in the planning phase also we have a, we need to have a well governed you uh, know structure for communication all the stakeholders have to be communicated properly okay and if you can see in the implementation implementation is where you know we can see lot of changes lot of changes come into place you know whenever we start implementing the project the change has to be controlled and coming to the closure so we have this lessons learned and after action reviews so definitely we have so many lessons we you know it's not that you know at the end of the project we learn something you know through the project you know when whenever the project begins from the day one you know we have so many lessons that we are going to learn everything should be captured so this is how you know the well governed principle works in all through the phases and if you can see the participatory as we already we have seen all the stakeholders you know important stakeholders have to participate in this particular project management so the participatory principle is woven through the entire project of the depro phase model it's not that you know it is only in one particular phase it is through all the phases okay starting from the project identification and definition till the closure of the project we can see here how it is so in the participatory see data collection the needs have to be collected so the data various from various sources the data has to be collected what if not all the stakeholders are actively participating in it it's it would be a difficult task for us to collect the data and we can see the risk identification in the pro, you know in the setup phase project setup phase we can see that you know we have this risk identification being done because different stakeholders from different you know perspectives they can identify the risk in the risk analysis the proper risk analysis being done okay and if you can see the implementation again we have the project change control and also we have the decision gates so definitely decision gates help us you know in reviewing uh, the execution of the project and if you think like yes something has to be changed the right decision has to be taken at the right time and it has to be changed so this is what is participatory principle what it speaks about in next comprehensive we can see that the project manager must be able to approach the project in a way that takes into consideration which project components fits together to contribute to the goal so not only in the identifying of the project since from the identifying the project till the closure so we have so many organizational objectives we have the goals are we are, if this particular project is aligned to the outcome so are we getting the right outputs so is the goal really achieved so all these things that comprehensive knowledge should be there okay as we can see that this is also you know woven through all this phases we can see here okay and uh, let us go to the integrated part as we said like integration is very very important the phases the tools the processes in a project they are not in silos so they are not scattered they are not uh, you know uh, separated they are all 
integrated so collectively they contribute to the success of the project so here if you can see this is different uh, things you know the team integration the risk integration the triple constraint triangle we can see here so the sustainability plan so after you you uh, hand over the project so is it really sustainable so what is the sustainability plan so all these things can be figured out using this integrated principle and if you can see adaptive, yes, definitely. Uh, even the most well-defined and planned for projects will exp uh, will experience challenges and issues that which is inevitable. You know, we never can predict the future, and definitely there is the change is inevitable, and we need to adapt according to adapt and you know move according to the changes. And decision making is very important in those situations. So this is about adaptive. And let us move to this uh, last part, that is the project manager competencies. So here, if you can see, what can we say? Is it uh, art or science, the project management? Anybody can answer this question. Is it an art or a science? Oh, of course, the answer is there on the screen. So surprisingly, the answer is, it's both an art and science so it requires the art of you know communicating to the people so of course we have the processes you know uh, we have this uh what triple constraints we have the tools to manage the things all this comes under the science you know but something along with the science is needed here is communication with the people with the human resource there should be some you know sympathy or empathy or that kind of human touch should be there the communication should be there so which is an art it's not that easy to communicate with the people and convince the people so it's both art and also the science the project management right <clears throat> so if you can see the art of the project management focuses on the people elements of the project and requires skills to enable the project managers to lead empower motivate and communicate effectively and coming to the artistic uh, uh, you know the thing you can see the project manager can direct the team when work challenges you know because motivating the team is very very important so so for that you know it's an art motivating the team right and if you can see the signs so we have uh, the planning estimating the measuring all these things come under the science we have the triple constraints that already we have discussed this is all the science so it's a fusion of both science and art the project management okay right and here you can see the art and science project management uh what are the science related uh, characteristic features and what are the art related characteristic features so where are we with the project so that is a science you know we can have some uh, figures and facts to be presented and how can the team be motivated it's an art isn't it so both the project management is a fusion of art and science so this is a four important things or you know i can say the competences a project manager should have okay so one is the pm technical the leadership interpersonal or next is personal or self management and development sector okay so i want everybody to listen actively here because i'm going to have a quiz for you after this uh, session okay on this particular topic okay so here, if you can see the PM technical, these are the four competency areas. One is the technical competency. The project manager should have the technical competency and he should have the leadership qualities. He should have some developmental specific characteristics or he should have some self-management and personal management uh, competences. So here, if you can see what is PM technical. So these are often referred to the collectively as a science behind the project management. Can the project manager identify, select, and employ the right tools and the processes to ensure the project manager's project management success? So the project manager should have the technical knowledge. So what tools are appropriate for, uh, you know, uh, use in this particular project? He should have the technical knowledge. And if you can come to the leadership, you know, uh, skills. For example, you can see the project manager has to communicate. He has to inspire. He has to resolve the conflict. So this kind of competency, we call it as a leadership or interpersonal competency, which the project manager should have. And coming to the personal and self-management. So here, if you can see the personal, the project manager's ability to 
manage himself. Okay, so he'll have to know what what is the priority. You know how how could he prioritize the things? How could he manage the time? How could he organize the work? This is all the self management, self discipline. So in in the starting picture we said like discipline should be there, right? So this is the personal management or self management. And next coming to the development sector specific, the ability to apply the PM technical leadership or the personal management competencies in the context of developmental projects on the development projects. So the development sector specific is like applying having all these abilities the pm technical the leadership and the personal management all these competences together you know he needs to have to achieve this developmental project uh, competency okay am i am i uh, clear about this uh, competences the technical competency pm technical and then the leadership or interpersonal and the personal and self management and the development sector specific competency so these are the four important competences okay right we'll move to the next slide which is quiz are you all ready for the quiz shall we go ahead with the quiz yes yeah so let me share do you, do you also have time for question and answer yeah definitely we have uh, let us yeah actually okay, that, okay. that was the next slide actually okay, uh, okay. you want me to answer like okay we can take the question we can do the we can do the quiz as well no problem all right thank you thank you so much right i hope my screen is visible here okay yeah yeah mm, yeah i need to yeah So here, all you people can go to the Google and uh, type something www.kahootit.it. Kahoot.it. www.kahoot. K A H double O T dot I T. After you type this website, you will be asked to enter the game pin. Yes, we have one contestant, Carl, Priya, James, Joyce. Majid. Pradeepcha. Ji, Shanti Ji, Shri. Lakshmana. Is anybody else joining? I repeat again. It's www.kahoot.it. Kahoot it. Atiraj Priya. I hope you people love your avatars here. <laughs> Seems like we can even customize it. Is it? Okay. Good, good. <laughs> Prasanjit. 
Lavanya Okay, uh, how many we have here? One, two, three, four, five. Twelve, thirteen. Yeah, thirteen, right? Okay, right. So anybody is joining? Okay. All right. So shall we start the quiz? Yes. Yeah, before we start, let me make some, you know, uh, instructions for you. So this, uh, you'll be having the multiple choice options here. You need to select one choice amongst this options that are given. And the how fast you answer to the question will matter here. Okay. No matter you give the right answer, but how fast you have answered the question is very important here. So that decides if you're going to be a winner or not. Okay. So faster's finger. So maybe for this, your internet also should support you. I wish you all the very best for this quiz. Right? I am starting the game here now. Here goes with the first question. So this is a project depro management competency quiz. Project manager competency quiz. The first question on the screen. Under which competencies shall proactively disseminate project information to all stakeholders fall you have 18 seconds left oh we got six answers now so does it fall under pm technical or leadership or personal or developmental specific time is up we have one second yes so if you can see, we have two people who have answered right, and it's PM technical. So if you can see here, the proactively disseminate the project information to all the stakeholders. So you'll have to provide or share the information with all the stakeholders, which is technical. You know, you should have the technical knowledge of what information has to be shared with which stakeholder. Okay, so that comes under the PM technical competency. Let us see who are those two. Oh, Shanti is on the top and then Lakshmana. Okay, we'll go to the next question without any delay. Under which competency shall motivate team members to willingly follow directions and achieve goals fall? So you need to observe this uh, keywords sometimes. So we got seven responses. So how fast and how accurate you answer will matter a lot. So you are left with eight more seconds. Right. So surprisingly, we have one right answer here. So here, if you can see, motivating the team members, it is a leadership quality. You know, only the leaders motivate the team, isn't it? So it's a, it, it comes under the leadership or interpersonal skill, motivating the team members. Let us see who is on the top now. Oh, Lakshmana has come to the top and second position, we have uh, Priyad. Let's go for the next question. I hope everybody is ready. So under which competency shall understand and navigate complex development environments fall? So understand and navigate complex development environments. I think uh, most of you would answer this question right. All right, 12 answers. Good. We have three more seconds. One. Right. Let us see. Oh, very nice. Eight of them have given the right answer it is development specific so understanding and navigating the complex de development environments 
so it is development specific they should have all these three you know to have this development specific uh, competency right we'll move to the next and we'll see who is on the top oh priya has come to the top and next followed by pradeep shah and then sri let us see uh, i think this would be the last question yes the last question for today is and which competency shall time management fall i i guess i'm going to get good number of correct responses for this what do you say this is a googly shot in cricket oh so quick answers still we have lot of time left 5 seconds very quickly you have answered let us see how many of you have scored right eight of you eight of you have given the right answer it's time management it falls under the self management it's a personal management time management right that comes under the personal management competency very good and let us see who is the winner who is sharing the podium we have at third level oh prasanjit lakshma is at the second level and who is the winner let us see any guesses priya this is a winner congratulations to three of you very good very good right congratulations